eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the love and mercy of God be with you. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. At that time, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and placing her in their midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such. What do you say about her? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground, and as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the eldest. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus looked up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and do not sin again. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear good listener, a good fifth Sunday of Lent to you. My dear good listener, I have chosen the theme to guide us in our meditation. The God who turns the old into the new. This theme I've derived it not very much from the gospel I've heard, but from the entire readings of today. The first reading of today comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 16 to 21. Here we see a God who brings his people from the suffering of Egypt to begin a new life. We read, God telling them, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So my dear good listener, we see God bringing his people out of the desert, out of the wilderness, and now he's putting a way for them. He's a God who changes the old to become the new. Just like we have the Old and the New Testament. The New Testament, as we know, Jesus came to fulfill the Old Testament. So we have the new. We are moving in the newness of life that Jesus has brought us through the waters of baptism. So God is bringing new things. He's a God of newness. So the question, therefore, is, are we journeying as people in the new life? Because if we begin a new life, as St. Paul says, we cannot be the same again. The same we find it in today's second reading, Philippians chapter 3, verses 8 to 14. I can read a few verses. Brethren, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as refuse in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. So dear good listener, Paul is giving his own testimony that now he counts every other thing as a loss. It is nothing. He counts his old self as a loss, and now he has begun a new life in Jesus Christ. So my dear good listener, if we have begun living in Jesus Christ, we can't be the same again. We could ask ourselves, when I became a Christian, 
Maybe I'm somebody who goes to church every other Sunday. But the question is, am I different from people who don't go to church? You may be a prayerful person. That's very okay. But the question is, has you are going to church changed you? Have you allowed Jesus who comes to change our life, to change your life so that you begin walking in the new way? Because for St. Paul, his old self is a loss. He has begun a new life in Jesus Christ. So do I live as though living in Jesus Christ is our way, our truth, and our life? Has the knowledge of Christ changed you? Because Paul says, because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, everything has changed. So he counts every other thing as a loss because he wants to gain Christ. So he can lose every other thing so that he may gain Christ. Is this the kind of life that I'm living? My dear good listener, the same we find it in today's gospel. Whereas the scribes and Pharisees are still stuck in the mud of the old life, and they want to use the old law to kill this woman caught in adultery, Jesus pictures them this. If you know you have never sinned, be the first one to cast a stone upon the woman. But all of them, they left because they were still living in the old life. That's why they had to leave. Because they judged themselves as unworthy. So what would that mean? That if you and I still live in the old life, we are very unworthy. That's why I usually tell people, you can never read the Old Testament to the New Testament. You will miss a point. Because Jesus has brought the newness in the Old Testament. So if you don't read the New Testament, then you don't find the fulfillment of the Old Testament. And the Old Testament is in Jesus. So definitely, we need the new life that Jesus brings to us. My dear good listener, am I still stuck in the mud of the old life? Like these scribes and Pharisees who still want to use the old law to kill the innocent woman. It's the same thing we find in Matthew chapter 19 when Jesus is being interrogated by the scribes and the Pharisees about to divorce. They want to use the old law to test Jesus. Is it allowed for a man to send a woman away for any reason? But Jesus says, have you not read in the scriptures that God will that a man should leave his mother and father and be united to his wife so that the two become one flesh? And they ask him, then why did Moses permit us to write a certificate of divorce to women? And Jesus says this because of the hardness of your heart. Otherwise, God had not permitted this from the very beginning. But because you were too hard and Moses had nothing to do with you, he decided that instead of killing your wives, you would rather write them a certificate of divorce. Moses did it so that he would spare the women. But from the beginning, that was not the case. So it's the same way in today's gospel. They are using the law of Moses. In the law of Moses, we are commanded to stone women like this. But is it the will of God? Or again, it's because of the hardness of people's hearts. So, Jesus tells them what is new. The new is that we forgive. The new is that we spare the sinners so that we do not add sin to the sin already committed by this woman. And some of us even today, that's what we do. It becomes easier for us to stone people to kill them. But Maybe even us who are killing or are judging others, we are already full of sins. So are you innocent to kill the guilty? We are all guilty, my dear friend. We are in the same boat. So the newness that Jesus is bringing to us is the love that God brings us, the mercy that God brings us. Last Sunday's gospel was about the prodigal son who is welcomed back into his father's house. Similarly, today we get this woman, a sinner, who is welcomed back into God's mass. And Jesus tells her, woman, has anyone condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and do not sin again. So what is this? Go and begin a new life, which is devoid of sin. Begin a new life. So my dear good listener, 
Jesus is calling us to live a new life like Paul, who says, I consider the other thing a loss. Like the first reading, that the Israelites are no longer in the old life they have been saved. God is going to change everything new. So may we, dear friend, enter into the new life of Jesus and allow him to change our lives so that we are worthy of him. The Lord be with you. And may the God of love and mercy bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wish you the best of the Sunday and call upon you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also to share this good news with your friends. Thank you. Our Lord Jesus.